And we're on to the 4th of June, and the overview is from the conquest of Northwest Europe. By noon on Sunday, June 4th, a gale was blowing over the channel and heavy clouds had justified the pessimism of the forecast. But during the evening, the experts became aware of the prospect of reasonably fair weather after the passage of the front on Sunday night. The interval might last from Monday morning until Tuesday morning, the 5th and 6th. At 2100 hours on 4 June, General Eisenhower and his commanders-in-chief met again to consider the new situation, and a meeting was called for 0415 hours on 5 June so that a definite decision could be made. That being the famous meeting that's always depicted in movies and documentaries. But let's go through the daily summaries for our three squadrons here, starting with 441, depicted in red on the side map. Two of our aircraft made a weather reconnaissance flight to the Con area, Six aircraft dive bombed a radar installation two and a quarter miles southwest of Fecomp. The bombing was exceptionally accurate. And now 442 Squadron, and as you can see on the map, all three squadrons carry out more or less the same mission, just at slightly staggered times. Now 442 Squadron, the B party consisting of most of 144 wing and 6442 echelon, left by road at 0700 hours for the concentration area. The pilots slept in this morning, a number having attended a dance last night at Worthing. Three were roused at 1000 hours to taxi some kites or to do some taxi checkouts of aircraft. Leave was cancelled and all warrants withdrawn by the accounting officer, so things are getting serious at this point. Squadron leader Russell spoke to the pilots on the new markings of aircraft, landing strips, and recognition at 1115. Flight Lieutenant Whitelaw gave his third and final lecture on first aid at 1500 hours, the subject being shock and burns. At 1600, breach for takeoff at 1700, the OC leading the 6 with 6 from 441, or in other words, 12 aircraft, to bomb a radar station in France. Light flak, no enemy aircraft, down at 1810. Heavy showers at night, some attended a WARF dance at Tordington Hall, Ford Station, total hours, 755. And that should certainly be WAAF, and I think, yeah, that was originally an R, just struck through with an A. Women's Auxiliary Air Force makes a lot more sense. And then 443 Squadron. Weather cloudy and cool with strong wind blowing, visibility good. Our parent wing, 144, moved out this morning with B Echelon and the main party. Or in other words, the folks who are going to go immediately over to France and set up the advanced landing ground. On its way to the concentration area. Instructions received this morning to cease aircraft marking until further notice. Only three of ours have been completed. Six aircraft engaged in training flying during the morning, practicing attacks and bounces. Pilots called for briefing at 1700 hours and 12 aircraft dispatched on bombing at 1755. No 48 hour passes or days off being granted in the squadron beginning today. Ops flying time 11 and a half hours, non-ops 5 and a half hours. So you can definitely see that things are beginning to get more and more serious here concerning the move. So let's start with the first flight, and this is 0915 to 1030, weather reconnaissance in the con area, nothing noted on the 541. Next up we have a 1015 to 1130, this is an escort of ships into Brighton Harbor, again nothing out of the ordinary noted on the 541, that would have been I'm sure uneventful. And then at 1655 the squadron gets airborne on a strike mission against radar installations out here on the Normandy coast, and it was Ramrod Mission 970, radar installations at Fecomp were dive bombed. All bombs fell less than 50 feet from the center of the target. So if I come in here to the radar site, now the other two squadrons are a little bit more specific about the site that they bombed. This one simply says radar installations at Fecomp. Now I know for certain that there was a radar station right here where this is depicted. And you can see the three pillars there. Those are the support pillars for what would have been a billboard radar installation. And I'll come up with some photos to show that now. In this case, I can't say with certainty that this is the exact radar station that was bombed. In the other two cases, I can, however, and I'm going to come to the 442nd and their radar strike. And this will be a little bit down the coast to the southwest. And this is a 1705 takeoff, so just slightly after and probably in coordination with 441 Squadron. Dive bombing radar installations two and a quarter miles southwest Fecomp. Three direct hits or near misses, other three within 50 yards of the target. Bombing west to east, eight to 3,000 feet. No enemy aircraft opposition, moderate inaccurate flak over the target. And I have what I believe to be that exact location outlined there. And we have a note that each aircraft carried a 500 pound bomb and it even gives the fuse delay setting used of 0.025 seconds. That would have been the lowest selectable fuse delay setting here. 
Now this exact spot is two and a quarter miles southwest of Fecomp, and I couldn't find anything on the terrain definitively to lead me to believe that this would be it, although it does seem reasonable. You can see an access road that would have been coming down to this area from the town, and I had almost convinced myself that these were bomb craters right here and had that as the site, but it's a little bit hard to tell, and I mean that is a actually a legitimate archaeological technique to pick out old features based on the reaction of crops, but yeah, nothing definitive, but that is at least the right general area. Now the next one, 443 Squadron, we are a lot more definitive on this one. Let me go to the description. So 1755 takeoff on this one, slightly after the first two squadrons went up. Weather cloudy and cool with a strong wind, visibility good. 12 aircraft dispatched on dive bombing mission, the target, number 970 radar installation on the coast, 10 miles southwest of Fecomp. Bombing was carried out in very good weather, and four hits were observed, with others within damaging distance. Intense light flak thrown up by nearby batteries, but no damage to our aircraft, no enemy aircraft sighted. One of our aircraft was forced to return to base before reaching target due to engine trouble. Now we'll come down here to the exact location that it called out here, and I'll back out slightly and bring up some recon photos. These were taken on the 6th of June, two days after this mission. And the site right here that I have pinned is exactly 10 miles southwest of Fecomp. So this, more than any of them, meet the description. This is also very consistent with a German radar site layout. You can tell that it's been bombed very, very accurately. Now the only thing on this site that gives me a little bit of pause is that we have another very consistent with a German radar site looking location right here with some fresher craters. So just based on the look of the craters, I would have picked this spot. Based on the location that was called out in the description, I would go with this spot. And I'll back out a little bit again, and this entire area was, in addition to having the radar, this was one of the primary listening posts for electronic intelligence, collecting radio transmissions from England. And the Allies knew that, and I would imagine that this entire area was hit at uh, many, many times during the war. But yeah, for our purposes, I think this is the most likely candidate right here for the exact spot. Perched up very, very well, and you have the telltale markers out here. You can still see the craters in a lot of these locations from this mission and many, many others. And coming up here to that other candidate location, yeah, you can definitely still see the cratering up here. And of course, it makes me incredibly happy to see this golf course here. I couldn't imagine a more beautiful place. And yes, I did check the rates, and of course, it's not cheap, but... But this is definitely added to a road trip list for France, so that's going to do it for the 4th, a very straightforward day, and we're getting closer and closer to the 6th of June. But we'll pick up tomorrow with June the 5th, so thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.